Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Liaqat Zaman and I'm going to be giving you a presentation on behalf of NZF of how and when, why, who, where, all about zakat. So let's start off then. First of all, the term zakat. Zakat is a term that we know is used in the Quran. Allah says, Aqimu salat, establish salat, your prayers, and give zakat. But the meaning of zakat itself in the Arabic language has several meanings. One of the meanings of zakat is an increase. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through a person giving their zakat to the needy people, Allah increases the wealth. A spiritual increase in the wealth and also a physical increase. And time and time again, the Quran tells us about the importance of helping the needy. And if you help the needy, Allah will help you. So an increase. Another meaning of zakat is purification. Purification, this is again something which purifies your wealth. All of our wealth that we have, every single penny, every single pound, whether it's in my wallet, whether it's in my account, every single penny is a right of Allah. And in that right, there are rights that Allah has stipulated for certain uh, parts of our community. So when we give that zakat, it's as though we're removing from our wealth a certain type of uh, tainted wealth, and we are giving it to people who can receive it. This is the purification of the wealth. And there's also another purification, which is the purification of the heart. By us giving a bit of our dunya, it automatically has an effect on our heart, and it has an effect on the, 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 the way we live our lives as Muslims. So, money is very important in all our lives. Another third meaning or third usage of the word zakat is barakah. Now, barakah, I'm going to write the Arabic word here because in reality, English cannot define the word barakah. Barakah is a, defined, is a divine understanding of Allah increasing, putting productivity, making it effective, you know, making the wealth wholesome. So much words can come into this word barakah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He increases and he, he makes our wealth more beneficial for us. So, with all of this in mind, let's move on then. So zakat is necessary upon a person who is Muslim. If a person is not a Muslim, there is no zakat. Number two is a person who is sane. And number three, a person who is a child. Now, uh, sorry, not child, I'm going to come to that, an adult. There is a difference of opinion amongst the scholars with regards to these two points. You have, on one hand, some scholars who say that zakat is not upon these. So you do not give zakat if a person is out of mental capacity. Someone whose brain cannot function properly, someone who cannot recognize between right and wrong in the society, what is correct, what is wrong, that person does not give zakat. And likewise, a person who is not an adult. So a person who is not an adult, they do not give zakat. So. So zakat is not necessary on two groups of people, the person who is insane and the child. This is one group of scholars. The other group of scholars say no, they have to give zakat. Yes, these two categories must also give zakat as well, the insane or the child. So who gives it? The guardian gives it on their behalf. Okay, so this is a bit about the conditions for when zakat becomes necessary. Let's move on from here then. Now, when we have zakat, zakat is only necessary upon us if that wealth that we have it is with us for a, an entire year. We use the 12 lunar months. People, because of this, people try to use your Ramadan because it's easy to follow with Ramadan. So let's say, for instance, on this, on this part of the diagram, we have... Uh, Cash, how much money the person has, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, so Now, when you have your cash, when you have your wealth, there's a certain level that you have to have. This level is called the Nisab. The Nisab at the moment is 243 pounds according to the value of silver. Okay, so this is the Nisab. There are two Nisabs that we have. One is the silver Nisab. And the other one is the gold Nisab. So if I was to if I was to make the gold one 
Currently, the value of the gold nisab is 2,600 approximately 70 pounds. So this is for the gold, and this is for the silver. Now, at NZF, we are on the opinion that you take your silver. You take the value, the lesser value, rather than the higher value. So we're going to be using the lesser value for this. So this is based on the silver, and that is based on the gold. So, if a person has more than 243 pounds of savings, whether it's in cash in hand, or in account, or PayPal, or whatever, then a person, their year starts. So let's say this person has, has earned, for the first time in his life, he's earned 500 pounds. So if you've got 500 pounds now, you make a note of that, then 12 months down the line, 12 months down the line, you check how much money do you have. So if the amount of money you have is exceeding the Nisar 243 pounds in this case, let's say for example it's 400 pounds, right? Now because it's above the line, now you have to give zakat. So you work out all of your assets at this time, all assets. Right? Irrespective of the fluctuation in the year, irrespective of fluctuation, whatever you have at this point in your time, you give zakat of that. This is the opinion of the uh, NZF. And this is also the opinion of Imam Abu Hanifa. Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he was on this opinion. However, according to the Shafi'i, the, the Malik and other schools, they have an opinion which is that you have to consider the year every time you earn some wealth. So every time money came into your account, so let's say some money came into your account here, some money came into your account here, some money came into your account here. So you have to actually start to consider the wealth at different points. So you don't just calculate once a year, you have to calculate multiple times in the year. Technically, if you were receiving an income, you know, uh, 52 times a year every week, 52 weeks a year, 52 times a year, that would mean you would have to have 52 calculations, subhanAllah, 52 calculations. This is why the NZF prefers to take the Hanafi position here, which is one calculation, you look at the snapshot of what you have, right, snapshot of your, your, your assets, and then you have it, simple as that. So, let's move on then. Hope you guys have understood this. Now, um, the next thing we have to understand is, when we have this wealth, what kind of wealth do we give zakat in? There are five types of wealth which are considered to be zakat of a wealth. Okay, number one, gold and silver. Gold and silver. Number two, cash. Number three, trade. Number four, equity investments. Investment. Number five, you have pensions. Okay, these are the five assets that you have, or the five kind of wealth that you need to have, uh, which are zakat wealth, basically. So let's look at these briefly. Gold and silver. If you have gold and silver in any shape or form, you have to give zakat. This is the position of the NZF. However, there are some scholars out there, like the Shafi position, which is that if a woman has gold and silver, this is the Shafi position, if a woman has gold and silver, and this gold and silver, she regularly wears it, regularly, she wears her jewelry, then in that case, she doesn't have to give zakat. No zakat on her. This is their position, however, and the NZF we take the position of the other scholars, which is any form of gold and silver, you have to give zakat to them. How do you work out the gold and silver? Well, there's two ways you can do it. One of the ways you can do it is you go to the jewelry store, the jewelry store, and you ask them to figure out for you, which is an easy way. You've got to pay them a bit. And number two is you can do it the cowboy style, right? And you want to know the cowboy style? You go online and you Google the value of scrap gold. You find the value of scrap gold. Now you want scrap gold, you don't want new gold. New gold, for example, like today, new gold was a value of 31 pounds per gram. Whereas scrap gold was approximately 28 pounds based on 24 karat gold. So there's about three, three, three pounds difference there. 
So you don't want, you want scrap gold. All jewelry is scrap gold, by the way. Right, so you're gonna work that out. Same for the silver, and there you have it. Now there is no zakat on platinum, there is no zakat on copper jewelry, there's no zakat on jewelry that's made from pearls or diamonds, nothing like that. Next, cash. If you have cash, you need to give zakat. When we say cash, we mean in your accounts, whether it's in your account, any account, saving account, uh, current account, uh, whether it's in your PayPal, you know, whether it's in the form of uh, you know, cash in hand, even cryptocurrency, cryptocurrencies, these are all now becoming currencies, so they're all in the ruling of cash. So you work out all the cash that you have, sometimes you might have gone to Umrah, and you might have some riyals, and you might have left them in the cupboard, right? And they might work out to be you know, a considerable amount of money, you need to work that out as well. So all forms of cash, you have to give zakat. Now, what if you borrowed someone money? This is a common question that people ask. I borrowed my friend uh, Suleiman, I borrowed him 1,000 pounds, Five months, five years has gone by. Does he have to give zakat in the five years that have gone by? So, according to the National Zakat Foundation, we take the opinion that yes, yeah, we call these receivables. Yeah, so receivables, you have to give zakat on receivables. And if five years goes by and Brother Suleiman has taken the thousand pounds, he ha I have to give zakat on each of the five years, even though I don't have it. So when do you give it? So some of the scholars say that what you do is you look at your situation. If you think the money is going to be a lot, you give every single year from the rest of your wealth, you give a share of zakat for that wealth which has been taken by the other person. The other opinion is that you wait until you receive all the wealth and then you give all the outstanding zakat. So the five years have gone by, you give it after five years. You got two options there, whichever one, is, is practical for you, you can take that, no problem with that. But basically that's that's what you're looking at. That's all to do with cash. Now, if you are owed cash, like for example, let's say uh, someone has said they are gifting you a thousand pounds, right? You don't have to give zakat on that until you receive it in your hand. Right? So let's say five years ago, I said to Brother Suleiman, I said, Suleiman, I'm gonna give you a thousand pounds. And after five years, he said, Brother Liakot, where's my thousand pounds? I'm gonna say, oh yeah. So I give him the thousand pounds. Does he have to give zakat in the past years? No, he doesn't. Right? Similar with dowry. If a woman is owed dowry money, the mahar, when she marries, uh, then that money, once she receives it, now it's going to be considered to be zakat of it. Before that, it was not zakat of it. Irrespective of how many years went by. So that's the cash. Number three, next, is trade. Now, when we look at trade, let me just tell you this, right? Let me explain this to you. When we look at trade, let's look at a business. There is a business. This is, this is Liyakut's business, Liyakut shop. Let me just put my name on there, so I don't get copyright or robbed. This is the Liyakut shop. This Liyakut shop is valued at 100K, 100,000 pounds, okay? Now, do I have to give zakat on the entire 100,000 pounds value of the entire shop with everything in? No, you don't. So what do I give zakat on? You only have to give zakat on three things in the shop. Right, so what are those three things? Number one, you give zakat on all liquid assets, cash. Whether it's in the account, whether it's in your hands, the, the person who owns the business, he is liable for this. Yeah, the person who owns it. So if there's one person, if there's two people, if there's three people, doesn't matter how many people they are, like, so cash. Number two is trade stock. So if you have trade stock, yeah, you've got some stuff in the bank. I've got a news agent, so in my news agents, I'll have sweets, I'll have food, I'll have other accessories, conveniences for the people. So these are all things that I want to sell. Trade stock, I have to give zakat on that. Now, when I buy my trade stock, I buy it from the wholesale for a small price and then I sell it for a price with a profit. So which price do I use? The purchasing price that I purchased there or the selling price which I'm going to be selling it to the customers. So the scholars say you use the selling price, the retail price. Yeah. You use the selling price if you have tagged or if you have advertised the price of the item. So let's say for example 
I've got a, a, a an eBay an eBay uh, account, and I've got lots of stuff that's coming. And I on my eBay account, I put the price of all the items, right? So now I have to work out the items according to the prices that I have allocated to each product. Now, if I haven't done that, then what do I do? Then you're allowed to use the wholesale. So whatever I purchased it for, I can use that price, right? So this is the second time. Now, if you are confused that this NZF have I've made some booklets, you can go on their website, you can download some guides, business guides, and it gives you all the breakdown of how much zakat you have to give on different types of stock. Whether it's uh, selling stock, or it's uh, you know stock that hasn't been manufactured yet, uh, stock that is dead stock, stock that is damaged stock. So all these different types of stocks, you can find information there, inshallah. But this is generally the gist of, of the issue. Number three is any receivables. Trade receivables. So let's say in my news agents I sell um, laptops as well. My news agent sells everything, by the way. So my news agent sells laptops. In this, these laptops I have sold, let's say Zaid. I've sold him five laptops, and the five laptops come to two thousand pounds. Now five years goes by, and Zaid still hasn't given me the money for the five laptops, which he still owes me. So what do I do? Do I have to give Zaid after the five years? Yes, I have to give Zaid after the five years. Right. So the five years going by. I must give zakat in those five years. I can give it as each year goes by, or I can wait for the entire sum to be given to me, and then I can give. So I have a choice. But this is, these are the three things. So in my business, let's say, in my business, I worked out all the stocks, I worked out everything, and I found that only 2,000 pounds worth of stock, 2,000 pounds of my business is zakatable, meaning it's cash, trade stock, and Receivables, that's it. The other 98,000 is non zakat I don't have to give zakat now. So in your business, if you have cars that you use, vans that you use, machinery that you use, IT software, computers, you know, equipment, the, the building. So fixed assets, no zakat. Okay, so I have to give zakat at 2,000 pounds. So what's that? So I give zakat. So 2.5%, which is the zakat rate. I'm going to work that out of 2,000 pounds. Right, and 2.5 percent. If you guys are good at maths, and you guys most likely are better than me at maths, but 2.5 percent of 2,000 should be 400 pounds. So I have to give zakat of my business, my 100,000 pound business. I have to give zakat of 400 pounds halas. Right, that's what that's what I have to do. Right, and so uh, oh, sorry, that. Uh, for, 2.5% is not 400 pounds, yeah? Again, I made a nice mistake there. So, let me just write this down before you guys attack me. So, 2.5% of 2,000 pounds should be 50 pounds. Yeah, should be 50. So, basically, 50 pounds is the zakat for my 100,000 business. Now, obviously, different businesses would differ. So, depending on what your, your, your business is, it obviously would differ. Right, investments. Investments works exactly the same as a business. All it is, is you have several people who are shared owners of that business. Right, so if you have shares in a business, equity, shares, then what you have to do is you have to find out where your shares are invested. And then you find that company, you ask them for these three things. Yeah, you ask them for those three things. Once they give you those three things, then you can work out how much zakat you have to give. So let's say, for example, this Zayn. Brother Zaid, he owns, uh, he has invested 20, 20k in my business. So he owns 20% uh, of the business. Right? So because he owns 20% of the business, that means from the accountable assets, i.e. 2,000 pounds, he has to work out 20% of 2,000. And then from that 20%, he works out 2.5%. Yeah, so what's 20% of 2,000? 400. Okay. And then 2.5% of 400, which is 10, 10 pounds. Yeah, I hope I'm right if I'm wrong. You guys can correct me, inshallah. So 2.5% of 400 is 10 pounds. So therefore, Zaid's investment in my business means that Zaid would have to give 10 pounds of zakat on the value of my business. And, and, and there you have it. That's how you do it. Now, if you don't know this, 
If you think, oh, I've got too many investments, my stockbroker has invested in multiple companies, then what do I do? Then there's an easy way. NZF has come out with a proxy figure, right? a benchmark. You can use the 25% proxy figure. So any company that you have invested in, NZF has gone through the FTSE 100 and they found that no business has more than 25% of assets, zakat of assets. So you can use that figure. So basically 25% and then from there you take out 2.5%. Yeah, so 2.5% of 25% of the value of your shares. So let's say your shares are, you've got 10,000 pounds worth of shares. You find out 25% of that, yeah, which is 2,500. And then from there you find out 2.5% of that. Right, and there you go. That's how you're gonna work out the shares. If you're confused, you can contact NZF. You can email them, you can phone them up inshallah and you can get advice from them for free. Finally, pensions. Now in pensions, pensions is exactly the same as investments and investments are exactly the same as trade. So these three basically are the same thing. But the only difference is there are two types of pensions. There are some pensions where you pay no zakat. And there are some pensions where you do pay zakat. Which pensions are there no zakat on? Those pensions which are state pensions, pensions which are final salary pensions, pensions which are uh, benefits, defined benefit pensions, right? These kind of pensions, you know, there's no zakat there, right? So the aim, the, the whole, the gist of it is that if you can allocate a fund manager, then you have to give zakat. If you don't allocate the fund manager, if it's out of your control, someone else is all dealing with it. So this is why if you have a defined contribution scheme, Defined contribution scheme, pension, right? You have to give zakat. So you find out from your pension provider, you can phone your HR, your company if you like, ask them, you'll get some information. And again, if you're stuck, you can just contact NZF and they can help you with that. So you look at what kind of pension you have, right? And if you do have a pension that is zakatable, again, you need to do the same as before. Either you're gonna work out the, the stocks, the investments, the cash, trade, stock, receivables, and then you work out your percentage or whatever share you have, or you work out the 25% and then from there to half percent Right, you use that. So this is basically what you need to understand about pensions. Now, finally, last, last but not least. So let me, should I, should I, should I, should I wipe this out? Yeah. yeah, okay. So Brother Suleiman says wipe this out. Inshallah, wipe it out. So now, the last part is liabilities now. Now, when it comes to liabilities, the thing you have to remember about liabilities is uh, the liabilities are deducted from your assets only, you only deduct your liabilities from your assets if those liabilities are outstanding. Outstanding and Halal. So, for example, like you owe the bank, you've borrowed money from them, you've got a mortgage, whatever, you're allowed to deduct that, but you can only use whatever you owe them within the next 12 months. Yeah? And it has to be the halal, that's why minus the interest. So, if you owe interest, you cannot include interest in this. So let's say for example, a person has a mortgage and they owe the bank £4,500 every year. What happens? £500 that says interest, £400 capital. So you minus the 400 from your assets and the rest of it, you work out the zakat. Okay, so let's say for example, you owe gas bill, it's outstanding, uh, council tax, you owe other taxes, other bills, phone bill, etc. All these things, as long as they are outstanding, you can deduct it from your your assets, those five things that you mentioned before, and then you can work out your zakat. Right, but if your, your, your liabilities are not outstanding, if they are future arrears, right, or they are not halal, for example, like interest or anything of that sort, then you cannot deduct that from, from your, 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 your assets. And, and that's it basically. So, if I was to summarize a calculation, for example, like, let's say there's this guy, let's call him Abid, Brother Abid. So Brother Abid, 
He wants to work out his zakat. So what is he going to do? He's going to look at these five things. Cash, uh, uh, gold, silver, trade, shares, pension. So let's say for example, he has 1,000 pounds of cash. In gold and silver, he's worked it out and he's got 500 pounds worth of gold and silver. Trade, in his business, he's got 500 pounds worth of zakatable assets in trade. Shares, he's got 500 pounds in shares and pension, let's say he's got 500 pounds of pension. Okay, now if we add all of that up, so, uh, 1,000 plus 500, 500, 2,000, that equals 3,000 pounds. So he's got 3,000 pounds of assets. Now he's going to minus from this the liabilities. So what are the liabilities? So let's say he, he has uh, bills and things and he adds them all up and it comes up to 1,000 pounds. He owes. So he's going to minus that from that. He's going to be left with 2,000 pounds. So he only has to give two and a half percent of two thousand pounds, like we said before, which equals fifty pounds. So fifty pounds is the zakat for brother Abid, and that's it. Now, finally, last little thing I want to mention now: who is zakat going to be given to? So zakat has to be given to the right people. If your zakat goes to the wrong people and you didn't do your due diligence, then according to the scholars, this zakat has to be repeated again. So you have to give it to the right people, right recipients. So National Zakat Foundation, what they do is there's eight categories. There's eight categories. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these eight categories of people, the National Zakat Foundation researches them, tries to find them, and it tries to give your money that you give in Zakat to these people in the most in the most professional and uh, you know due diligent way so if you give us the zakat money inshallah we're going to be distributing it within the uk to the people who deserve it i hope you guys benefit from this presentation may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our zakat may he accept our ibadat assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh